Um, I don't have anything really good prepared. I don't have a PowerPoint presentation. I didn't even know I was doing this until a few days ago, so I just made something up on the way over here. So um, I'm going to do A, B, C, and the F. So A, B, C is um, take action. Um, B is think big, and we'll just see. Uh, know your competitive landscape, and then the F word is obviously the F. <laughs> so um, I assume a lot of you are entrepreneurs, and a lot of people who are presenting are building companies, and so. A little bit of my background, I worked in investment banking for about 20 years. For the first 15 years, I was doing mostly little market stuff and very mainstream stuff. So about five years ago, I launched a company called Atelier, and that's a French word for studio. So it's ideally a place that provides investment banking services for early stage companies. So typically, if you wanted to raise $3 million and you knocked on Montgomery & Co's door, they'd be like, that's really nice, that's really cute, that's our fee. So they don't, they don't help people raise $3 million. So, Companies come to us, and some of our clients are, um, you may know Alexander Plokoff, he's a designer in New York. Um, Aaron Featherston is also a designer. Uh, Visual IQ is a marketing analytics company out of Boston. So we have pure fashion design clients, and we have technology clients. So it's really just a wide, wide range. So what I want to talk to you guys about is what I can tell you very quickly, ABC and the F word, about what you can do to learn from everybody's mistakes. I've been doing this now for five years, and. I can really almost write a book on the things that entrepreneurs do wrong. So the first thing is take action, like actually get up and do something. And when I thought about taking action, here's the bad way to take action. Uh, there's a really funny thing, it's um, Mike Navarro, I think is his name, he does this thing, it's called, you can Google this, um, F you pay me, right? So this whole really funny speech about how startups will go up to somebody, he's a web designer, oh, build me this website and I'll, I'll pay you if we get funded, right? Like, do this pitch for me, build my financial model and I'll pay you if we get funded. Well. Your job is to actually go get funded, right? Like, if Mike builds you a website, like that does not mean that you'll get funded because the website is so awesome. If I build you a presentation in like a deck, it doesn't mean that you're gonna get funded because my work was so awesome. Like, you need to actually take the action. You need to like go find the angel investors, you need to go, and I always say, go to people who are experts in your field and ask if they'll be on your advisory board and then tell them how awesome your company is and be like, oh wow, like I'll invest. And so don't always, Ask like, hey, you know, can you invest in my company? And like, say, hey, I'd love to speak with you because I know you have a great background in, in what we do. And butter them up and ask them to be on your advisory board and give them some equity. And 99% of the times they'll put, you know, 25,000 or 10,000 into your company. So the A is take action. Like, go out there and, and don't think your your website or your deck is going to get you funded. Um, investors invest in people, right? So you need to take action. You need to show that you're incredibly tenacious like don't be if you're shy you need to like really get over being shy because investors want to see that you're like a real go-getter you know a lot of perseverance and you're going to go out there and get things done because once they give you the money that's what you have to do right you have to get the users you have to get the customers you have to bring revenue in so you have to be really aggressive and i know a lot of times people who are introverts like actually very introverted um get really shy about that just take action just like you know hit the ground running uh, the B is think big. People always say, I have this really cool company, and it's like this little feature, and it's like, well, that's cute, but like that's not a company, right? So if you're gonna go out to a VC, you're gonna go to Sequoia and say, you should invest in this really cute little feature. Well, they're not gonna care because that's not a billion dollar business. So VCs want to invest in billion dollar businesses, right? Like Facebook is a billion dollar business, right? So the idea could have started very small, like, oh, it's gonna be these kids at Harvard. But your vision has to be really big, right? So if you were Mark Zuckerberg, you'd say, it's gonna start here right here at Harvard, but if everyone saw the movie, like a million's cool, but a billion's better, right? It's so like, think really big. Like, it's gonna start here at Harvard, but it can go to all the Ivy League schools, and then it can go here, and then it's like, it's incredibly huge. So, the B is think big. C is competition. People always say, oh, I, I don't have competition. I met with a gal who's actually very seasoned. She's not a young person. And she says, she gives me this horrible pitch deck. And she's like, here's my company. We're the first mover advantage. I'm like, honey, you're not the first mover. People have been doing this like the past five years. So, like, the fact that you would have a pitch deck and you'd say that you're the first mover, there's nobody in your space, is so bad. And because really what you're telling an investor is like, I am totally clueless. And this is a company she'd been working on for like 18 months. So it wasn't like she just came up with it last night. So people say, I don't have competitors. Nobody can do what I do. But you have a competitive landscape. So your competitive landscape is the person who kind of does what you do, this person who does something but a different field, and it's this huge, incredible, think of you know, a campus, a landscape. And you should know that inside and out. You should know every indirect competitor. So somebody who's doing something similar to you who could, who could actually eat your lunch, right? And your job as an entrepreneur raising capital is you want to put that all in one big you know, Excel spreadsheet or however you want to keep the data. 
and you want to know what everybody's doing, what all your competitors are doing, and how you're going to do it better, right? So here's this example of this gal who told me she had first mover advantage, and I had to like stop from not laughing. Um, here's the five people who've done this in the last five years, and here's what they did wrong. They went after this wrong. I'm going to do this different. This person did this wrong. I'm going to do it different. So the reason you want to know your competitive landscape is because you can learn from all their mistakes. So A was take action, B was think big, and C was know your competitive landscape. And F word is not the F word you guys are thinking of. Finance. Um, I would say 99% of the companies I work with neglect the finance. So people will say, I have this really cool product. Like everybody up here has a really cool product and really, really cool service and a really cool, cool idea. But who actually goes back to their office and like thinks about financials? Like who even builds revenue models and like really thinks about how are we going to bring money in? And who actually like really sits down and analyzes in a spreadsheet like, okay, here are our revenue streams. This revenue stream right here is completely problematic. Like we make $500,000 a year here, but it cost us a million to maintain it. You know, that is so important and it's just shocking how many um, entrepreneurs really just don't, don't think about it. They think, get users, you know, get revenue, but you have to really think about each revenue stream, how expensive it is, is it to get, right? So if it's costing you more to get that revenue stream, that's not a very sustainable business. Um, I, I would tell you to look at Zynga. Zynga is a publicly traded company now. You can look at all their financials. It's amazingly profitable and that's why Zynga is Zynga, right? And you can think of other gaming companies that failed, but that's why their competitors fail. And they're, but, but that's really important. So um, take action, think big, know your competitors, and know everything about finance because it's a it's a boring topic, but that's what's going to sustain your company. So, and I'll answer questions. Do you have a question? No, you're no. just scratching. No. Can you share with us uh, <laughs> about your trip to the coding fashion? Oh yeah, yeah. So um, I went to Decoded Fashion. It was so much fun. So if you're interested in the fashion industry, um, I would definitely go to New York. Um, I, I go, I'm by coastal, so I go back and forth. And what we have in tech, they have in fashion. So if you're in the fashion technology, really start going out there. And Owen's a great person to facilitate those meetings. Um, so I was able to go to Decoded Fashion, and it was just such an amazing place. I met um, Stacy Bennett. She's a lady from Alice and Olivia. I met. Um, Nicole Miller, um, just amazing, amazing people were there. So it's really a great experience, and we've really talked a lot about the um, where, where's retail going, right? Like um, before, everything used to be brick and mortar, and then we moved into e-commerce. But now it's really a shift. Fab.com just raised a bunch of money yesterday. They announced they're going to create a store. Uh, Warby Parker has already put, been putting little satellite stores, and they're going to create a store. So. Um, it's really important if you are building a startup in fashion and tech that you really understand where these business models are going. And I'm a big, big fan of retail and brick and mortar because I think you need, like if you know Lululemon, the sorting car, they, they, they would never exist online, right? They are um, all about the, the experience you get. Um, Gap acquired Athleta, which is used to be an e-commerce site for, um, for fitness apparel. And they, the CEO was saying that once they opened the actual Athleta store, their stores made like five times on the websites. Because people want to engage and they want to experience things. And there's some products, and especially fashion, where you have to engage with your customer. It's, it's a brand, it's an experience, you have to get them in. So I would really, and that's what I, my takeaway was from the kind of fashion, was that retail, brick and mortar is still very important. Did we hear from Rebecca uh, I met Rebecca Nicola. Yeah, a lot of so she just had a baby. I don't know if you guys know who that designer is. She just got funded through um, TPG. Um, so she's great. So yeah, I, Dakota Fashion, I cannot say enough good things about them. If you ever get a chance, check out Dakota Fashion in New York. And we do have Fashion Tech NY. And we are working on the next uh, event. We just did one about two months ago. I think we're waiting. Uh, fashion there is first week of September, I think. So we might be doing something. Yes, I mean, if you're building a company, you're really in the best place because I go back and forth and I'm just so impressed by how smart everybody is here. And everyone is so nice in Silicon Valley, like you guys are from Belarus. So I'll be like, people are just so nice. Like, it's just where everyone's so casual and willing to just help you, and except for Mike, who doesn't want to build websites for free. But most people are just really willing to help you, and it's a very um, informal environment. So if you're building a company in San Francisco, you're very lucky. I guess you guys are from LA, right? So. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. Awesome. In California, you're very lucky. Any questions? And I'll be here all night, so if you have any questions, let me know.